In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to make a choker, trim, or a collar. This is basically a three-in-one pattern. Your trim, for example, will be made with motif number one. And you'll make as many of these motifs as needed for the length of the trim. Now this trim is fantastic for home decor. If you would like to use it at the bottom of a skirt, for example, that's one good way of using it. Um, you know, really it's just your imagination that will stop you from all the various ways you could actually use this particular spider web trim. Next, you have your choker. Now your choker and your collar are both made using three motifs. The first motif, as seen in the front of this choker or the back of this collar, is the same as motif number one that you see in the trim. And then from there, you will have a left side motif and a right side motif, giving you motifs one, two, and three. And those three motifs are going to allow you to make the collar and the choker. Really, what's going to be required is basically the length that you're going to be working with and any additional embellishments that you might like to add to this. So for example, with your collar, you're going to want to either make or use a button or any other embellishment that you might like as a clasp. Here, since the number one motif is in the front and the clasp is in the back, you can use beads and a pendant in order to add additional interest to your choker. But first I have a little bit of an introduction that I think you might enjoy watching. If you've already seen it or if you just wanna jump right into the project, just skip ahead a few minutes and you'll be right where you need to be. Otherwise, enjoy the show. Of the over 50,000 species of spiders with their own unique way of spinning, there are six basic categories of webs that I am aware of. And this includes funnel webs, sheet webs, triangle webs, tangle or cob webs, orb webs, and net webs. Most webs are a fabric of multiple types of silk that function according to its specific or architectural requirements. Most webs, ounce per ounce, are stronger than steel and usually 10 times stronger than Kevlar. Orb webs, triangle webs, and tangle or cob webs are the styles we use most often in our decor designs and art pieces. Spiders have been spinning webs for almost as long as they've been walking the earth. They are incredibly ancient and have been documented in our world's fossil records dating back 300 million years. Our oldest example of a spider's web was discovered frozen in time and preserved in a chunk of amber that's believed to be around 110 million years old. It's little wonder that we humans have used the spider's web as analogies and in metaphors for millennia. It has been used interchangeably with weaving, knotwork, spinning, one's fate, spell casting, and the connectivity between humanity, the world in all its facets, and our gods. Different cultures from all over the world have ascribed both positive and negative attributes with regards to this amazing example of natural engineering. According to some modern Christians, the web represents Christ's promise of protection. And you can find a similar sentiment in the old Islamic oral traditions symbolizing the web as a symbol of all its protection. In some parts of Japan, spider webs are considered good luck and sometimes given as gifts. In parts of Africa, webs are used for divination or as a message from one's ancestor warning of an impending death. The ancient Romans, Greeks, and some Europeans along with their own mythology of webs also believed in the mystical healing properties of spider webs and used certain ones to make bandages and aid in wound care. However, there are plenty of lore that tells us the web is also believed to have a dark side. They can be seen as bad luck 
or the thing that can reveal hidden truths about oneself in a dream that one is not ready to face. It can also present with trickery or deceit, uh, most certainly that there may be struggles ahead. In Hinduism, they can be the thing that separates humans from God or also that thing that catches souls. During the Middle Ages in Europe, spider webs were often seen as a daemon's trap for unsuspecting peasants or evidence that a witch was lurking about. Today, some still believe that webs over doorways and in window sills have the ability to attract and bind curses to one's home or space. Whether you see spider webs as a negative or a positive force in your life, one thing can be said for both aspects. In the matrix of our multiverse, every thought and word, every action and deed is woven into a web that interconnects with other webs being created by every other energy. Welcome to Weaving Weird Studio on My Creative Weird Life. My name is Sig and what a pleasure it is to have you with me at this time today. It's your interest and support that allows me to contribute new content and weekly videos. Help us all grow together by tapping that subscribe bar, notification bell, and like buttons. I look forward to your comments and always value your feedback. Now let's get started. For today's video, I'm going to be using this wood violet color of crochet thread. It's size 10 and it's put out by Aunt Lydia and it's their classic crochet thread brand. Now for this particular project today, I am going to use a number four crochet hook. And you can use a number two or a number four, whichever suits you best. Um, I happen to be experimenting with a number four, so this is what I'm going to be using today. It's a 1.25 millimeter. And to give you some context, this is a number two steel crochet hook, 1.50 millimeter hook. And I don't know, I'm gonna try to see if we can get you to see if you can see the difference in, in the size of the actual hook itself and the head. So you can see the two is bigger than the four. And in terms of what that looks like with your completed fabric, I've got one piece here that I did with a size two. So you can see how the chain and the crochet stitches are a little looser. And then this is the piece that I did with a size four hook. So you can see how, how those chains are considerably tighter. I'm hoping you can kind of kind of get a feel for that with with this view. So because this is a three in one crochet project, I am going to stop at a couple of different points in the project to explain where I would deviate in order to achieve a trim, a collar, or a choker. But regardless of which one of those you are interested in making, it all begins with this very first motif. So I'm gonna begin by chaining seven. So get one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I'm gonna join so that I can create a ring. Just like so. Next, I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. And that's going to stand in as my first double crochet. And then I'm gonna to continue to double crochet nine. Double crochets. So one, two, three, eight, and nine. Next, I'm gonna turn my work so the back of my work is facing me. 
and I'm going to chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is the beginning of row two. So then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to skip the next two stitches and I'm going to double crochet in the stitch after that. And then I'm going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to skip the next two stitches and then I'm going to double crochet in the stitch after that. And then again, I'm going to chain six more, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to skip two stitches and that's going to bring me right back here to my very last stitch. And then I'm going to double crochet. So, so far at the end of row two, this is what I have. Next, I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to double crochet into that very same stitch. Next, I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to double crochet into this chain six loop. Again, chain four. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the combination of a double crochet. Plus a chain one, plus another double crochet right into that same stitch. Then I'm going to go ahead and chain four, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to double crochet into this next chain six loop. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to chain four again, one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to do the combination of the double crochet plus a chain one plus another double crochet right into this double crochet stitch. Then I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, and four. And again, I'm going to double crochet into the chain six loop. And one more time, I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to come over here and the third chain from my turning chain is where I'm going to place my double crochet. Plus my chain one, plus my next double crochet in the same stitch. So I've completed row three and this is what I have. And if you're following along, this is what yours should look similar to as well. Okay, so now I'm going to turn and for row four, I'm going to begin by making four chains, one, two, three, four, and then doing a double crochet right into that chain one space. Next, I'm going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet. And then I'm going to chain six again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double crochet right here into this next chain one space. And then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to double crochet again into that same space. Next, I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, 
and six. And I'm going to double crochet into this next double crochet. And then I'm going to chain six again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then I'm going to double crochet into this next chain one space. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to double crochet again right back into that same chain one space. And then I'm going to chain six again. I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet. And then I'm going to go ahead and chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to double crochet into the next chain one space. I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to double crochet in that space one more time. And that's the completion of row four. Now for row five, we're going to go ahead and turn our work. And I'm going to once again chain four. And then I'm going to double crochet into that chain one space. And pretty much for row five, we're going to do almost the same thing as we did in row four, except my count is now going to be seven chains. So I'm going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet. And then again, I'm going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double crochet into the next chain one space. And then I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to double crochet again into that same space. So I think probably at this point, you can kind of see the pattern. It's pretty repetitive as most crochet patterns go. But this is nice because it looks a lot more difficult than it really is. I mean, don't get me wrong. It took me a little bit to try to figure out a pattern. But once you get the pattern, it's like, oh, okay. Well, that was easy, I think. At any rate, we're going to go ahead and we're going to double or sorry, we're going to chain seven once again. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Double crochet in the next double crochet. And then we're going to go ahead and chain seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then once again, I'm going to double crochet in the one chain space. Plus a chain one. And then a double crochet again back in that same chain one space and then once again just as before I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain seven two three four five six and seven and then I'm going to double crochet again and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain seven one more time And then one more set of the double crochets plus the chain one right there into that last chain one space. And that is the completion of row, row five. I'm going to turn my work. And now we're going to start row six. One, two, three and four just as before and then with a double crochet right into that chain one space I'm going to chain eight one two three four five six seven and eight and then again I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet and then I'm going to chain eight again one three, four, 
six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to double crochet into the next chain one space. Plus a chain one, plus an additional double crochet into that same chain one space. I'm going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And just as before, I'm going to double crochet into that double crochet stitch. And then again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to double crochet into the chain one space. And I'm going to chain one, plus I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double crochet again into that same space. And then I'm going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then again, double crochet into that double crochet, the next one, and then chain eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just as before, same old, same old, I'm going to double crochet right into that chain one space. I'm going to chain one and make my last double crochet for this row. Now we're going to turn our work again, and that brings us back to the right side of our work. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain one. And that chain one is going to stand in basically for a single crochet right there on the end of the work. And then in the chain one space, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to single crochet once. And then I'm going to make a three chain pico. One, two, three. And so I'll just back up here really fast. For those of you who do not know how to make a pico, I'll go a little slower. So I've made my single crochet and now I'm going to make my pico and it's a three chain pico. So I'm gonna chain three, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna come down here and you see where this horizontal bar sits right here at the base of the pico and then of course the other little bar right next to it I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert my hook right into those bars I'm going to yarn over I'm going to pull that yarn through and then I'm going to continue to pull it through and make a slip stitch and that is my first pico Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet 10 single crochets in this next eight chain space. So one, two, three, nine, and 10. And then in this next double crochet stitch, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a single crochet. And then I'm going to make my second three chain pico. One, two, three. And then I'm going to single crochet, 10 single crochets in the next eight chain space. So one, two, nine, and 10. And then in the next one chain space, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a single crochet. And then I'm going to make a three chain pico. And then I'm going to continue just like that. So in each eight chain space, I'm going to single crochet 10. And then right here on the double crochets. And then also in the chain one spaces, I'm going to make a single crochet and a three chain pico. I'll meet you right back here when I've completed row seven. Now 
Now, after I've finished my last pico, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make one more single crochet into the third chain from the end of row six. And this completes my first motif or motif number one. Now, if I'm going to go ahead and make the trim, as you can see right here, with this, where I have motif one side by side by side and so on and so forth, as long as you'd like to have it happen. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to stop right before I do my last pico. And then I'm going to get my another motif number one. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain one. There you are. There we go. We'll chain one. And then I'm going to slip stitch right here into the pico of my other number one motif. Just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a chain. And then I'm going to complete it just as I would a standard pico. And then also I'm going to go into my third chain from the end of row six and then I'm going to make my last single crochet and then so if I were making the trim I would finish off here I would just tie it off here and I would make as many of these motifs as I need to make in order to get the desired length of of my trim so now once I have all the motifs together that I want, I am simply going to single crochet each stitch all the way along the length of my, of my trim. At this juncture, I've decided that I'm going to move on and I am going to create, I'm going to show you how you can continue to make the collar or the choker whichever whichever way you please so then of course i'm going to get to my pico and i'm gonna act like i didn't stop at all and i'm gonna go ahead and i'm going to make this last pico for you and then i'm going to make my very last single crochet right there in that third chain from row six and so this completes row seven and it also completes motif number one as I begin motif number two I'm going to continue straight away from motif number one and I'm going to do this by turning my work and then I'm going to chain three and then I'm going to join right here into this first pico with a slip stitch i'm going to turn my work and i'm going to chain three and then i'm going to double crochet seven one two and seven So now your work should look something like this. I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then I'm going to skip two and I'm going to double crochet in the next stitch. And then I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to skip two. 
and then I'm going to double crochet right here into the third chain of this last stitch. Next, I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. And then I'm going to slip stitch right into my second picot here on this first motif. I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to then chain one. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double crochet right here into the same stitch. And now we've begun row three for motif number two. And then like before, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to double crochet into that chain six space. And I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to make a double crochet into the next double crochet space. And then I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to double crochet one more time into that same stitch. And then next I'm going to chain four, one, two, three. And I'm going four. to double crochet into that chain nine space. I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, four. So next I'm going to double crochet in the third chain from that turning chain from row two. Then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to double crochet again in that same stitch. So now once You've completed your row three of this second motif. You should have something that looks similar to this. I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to double crochet right there into that chain one space. And that gives me my first stitches for row four. And then just like before, I'm going to like in back in motif number one, I'm going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to double crochet in the next double crochet. And I'm going to chain six again, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to double crochet into the chain one space plus a chain plus one more double crochet in that same space and then again I'm going to chain six one two three four five six and then I'm going to go ahead and double crochet in the next double crochet and then one more time chain six one two three four five and six and then I'm going to double crochet in the next chain one space. And I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to double crochet again in that same space. Next, I'm gonna chain five. One, two, three, four and five and then I'm going to count up five single crochets here from motif number one and I'm going to slip stitch so your work should look something like this here at the end of row four I'm going to turn my work and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slip stitch 
in the next two chain stitches. And I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm going to double crochet in this chain one space. And that is how I begin row five for motif number two. So next I'm going to chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm going to double crochet in the next double crochet. And then I'm going to go ahead and chain seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double crochet in the next chain one space. And I'm gonna make a chain one and I'm gonna double crochet again in that same stitch. And I'm in chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to double crochet in the next double crochet. And then I'm going to chain seven one more time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then again, just as before, double crochet in the next loop with a chain one and double crochet into that third chain. And that completes row five. Now for row six, I'm gonna turn my work and I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And I'm gonna double crochet right there into that chain one space. And then I'm gonna chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet. And I'm in chain eight. And I'm going to double crochet plus a chain one plus another double crochet right here into this chain one space. And then chain eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Just as before, double crochet. And then chain eight one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Next, I'm going to double crochet into the chain one space. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to double crochet again into that same space. And now I'm going to chain four. And so this time what I'm going to do is from this fifth single crochet, I'm going to count up four. So one, two, three, and four. And that's where I'm going to slip stitch my four count chain. And that's also going to be the completion of row, row six. So for row seven, I'm going to turn my work. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet five in this chain four space. So one, maybe, one, <laughs> two, three, four and five. And then I'm going to make a single crochet in this chain one space. And then I'm going to do a three chain picot. One, 
two, and three. And then I'm going to single crochet 10 in this eight chain space. One, two, three, nine, and 10. And then I'm going to make a single crochet right here in this double crochet. And I'm going to make my second pico for motif number two. One, two, three. And then just as before, we're going to go ahead and do 10 single crochets in the next eight chain space. And then in the next one chain space, we're gonna do a single crochet plus a three chain pico. Again, single crochet 10. And then in the next double crochet, single crochet plus a three chain pico. Single crochet 10 in this next eight chain space. And then Again, in our very last loop here at the end of motif number two, we're gonna go ahead and make a single crochet plus a three chain pico plus a single crochet. So as you can see here, I've jumped ahead and this was motif one. And then here's motif two, repeated several times. And once I've decided how many of the motif twos that I want to do according to the length of the collar or choker, as it may be, that I want to do, I'm going to then decide how long how long the, the trim in which I will attach a snap or a button or even a ribbon to just simply use to tie closed with, uh, how long that part of the trim is that I want it to be. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to chain an additional six. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then I'm going to finish off there. Next for motif number three, we're gonna start working with that from motif number one, of course, just on the opposite side, but we're going to start on the reverse side or the wrong side of motif one. I'm gonna begin right here in the pico. I'm gonna tie my thread into the pico. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to slip stitch right here into that single crochet, that last single crochet on the motif one. I'm gonna slip stitch, I'm gonna join. Then I'm going to turn my work. And I'm gonna chain three. And then I'm gonna double crochet seven into that three chain loop. And seven. Next, I'm gonna turn my work and begin row two. For row two, I'm gonna chain nine. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna skip two, and then I'm gonna double crochet in that next stitch. Next, I'm gonna chain six. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double crochet in that last stitch of row one. Enter my work. And then I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Next, I'm going to double crochet in that same stitch. And then I'm going to chain four again. One, two, three, and four. Then I'm going to double crochet in this six chain loop. I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a double crochet plus a chain plus a double crochet all in this double crochet right here in the center. And then I'm going to chain four again. One, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to double crochet right here back in the center of that nine chain loop right there. Chain four, one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to double crochet in the third chain of this nine chain turning stitch. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do another double crochet in that same stitch. Next I'm going to slip stitch right here into this second pico of the first motif. I'm going to turn my work And we're going to begin row four. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and slip stitch into this chain one space. And then I'll chain four. One, two, three, and four. And I'm going to double crochet right back here in that chain one space. Next, I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to double crochet in the next double crochet. Then again, I'm going to chain six more. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to double crochet here in the next chain one space. I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to double crochet again in that same chain one space. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain six again. Two, three, four, five, and six. And again, a double crochet in the next double crochet. And then we're going to go ahead and chain six again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then one more time, I'm going to double crochet into this chain one space. I'm going to chain one and then double crochet again into that space. So this is basically like motif two, of course, except you're kind of working backwards. So if you need to, just take it a little slow and you'll find your rhythm. Next, I'm gonna turn my work. I'm going to chain four. Double crochet in that chain one space. And now I'm going to chain seven for this fifth row. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then again, double crochet in the double crochet. 
And then I'm going to chain seven again. Three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm going to double crochet right here into this chain one space. And a chain one. And I'm going to double crochet again into this chain one space. And then I'm going to chain seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Next, I'm going to double crochet again in the next double crochet. And chain seven one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm going to double crochet into the chain one space. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to double crochet again into that chain one space. Next, I'm going to chain two. And I'm going to slip stitch into the fifth single crochet between the second and the third pico of the first motif. Then I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to slip stitch in the next two stitches. And then in this chain one space, I'm going to go ahead and chain, well, first I'm going to slip stitch into that and then I'm going to chain three. One, two, and three. Then turn your work. Next, I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. So that'll basically be a total of seven chains. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slip stitch right into this ninth single crochet between Pico 2 and Pico 3. I'm going to turn my work again. And then I'm going to slip stitch four. We got one, two, three, and then four. I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to double crochet again into that chain one space. Next, I'm going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm going to double crochet right here into the next double crochet. I'm going to chain eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to double crochet into this chain one space once. And then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to double crochet again into that same chain one space. And I'm in chain eight. Again, I'm going to double crochet into this double crochet. And then I'm going to chain eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm going to double crochet into this next chain one space. And then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to double crochet again into that space. Then I'm going to turn my work. 
And we're working on our, the last row, which is going to be row seven for motif three. And then I'm going to begin that by making a chain one. And then I'm going to single crochet into that chain one space. And I'm going to make my first three chain pico. And then like before, I'm going to single crochet 10 in this eight chain space. And then in the next double crochet, we're going to single crochet there and then add a pico. And then we're going to single crochet 10 more times in this eight chain space. And then of course, in the next chain one space. I'm going to go ahead and single crochet plus a three chain pico. I'm going to continue that all the way until we're at this last four chain run, at which time I'm going to single crochet five in that four chain space. And this is where we're going to finish off motif three. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. And once you fasten that off, you're then again going to weave this into the back of your piece. And then again, just like we did with this first motif number three, I will repeat this four more times to give me a nice even length from the back middle piece, which is motif one, of the center back of your collar. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to finish the next four motif threes and I will see you right back here. Once you've finished your collar or choker to the desired length, the next thing I want to do is I want to come to the motif that I just finished and I'm going to turn the wrong side to myself. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain six, just like I did on the opposite side a little while ago. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to cut and finish that off. And then I'm going to come all the way back. I'm going to turn my work facing me. And I'm going to come back to where I had the original six chain. And I'm going to begin right here at the very end in this very first chain. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in and then chain one. Next, I'm going to go to the next chain and I'm going to single crochet. And I'm going to continue to single crochet each stitch. So one single crochet for each stitch. So now when I get down here to the edge of my motif, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to place one single crochet where that single crochet is. And then I'm going to place two single crochets right here into this chain or double crochet space.
I'm then going to make a single crochet right here where my rows meet. And then I'm going to continue and I'm going to make two single crochets in this next double crochet space. And then again, I'll work another single crochet right here where the two rows meet. And then again. And I'm going to continue that all the way down. Now, when I get here, again, it's going to be a single crochet where the two rows meet and then a single crochet for each of the two aspects to the double crochet. Then I'm going to do a single crochet right here where motif, this motif meets the next motif. And I'm gonna continue that. Now when I get down here to this first motif that is the very center of our collar or our choker, I am going to single crochet four single crochets in that space. So I'm gonna continue on and I will meet you right back here in just a moment when I've finished doing a single crochet for each one of these stitches. Now as I come to the end of my length here, I'm gonna continue just as I have until I hit this next six chain length and then I'm gonna single crochet in each one of those lengths. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to continue to single crochet in each one of those single crochets for the entire length. So I'm going to do a second row. And then after my second row, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do one more row. And then I'm going to fasten off my work. When I've completed that, I'm gonna come back and I will show you what the finished products look like. So now that I've finished my three rows, I blocked my work. I added a bead that I made kind of into a little bit of a decorative button for the front of my collar. And then I also added a snap. And this will hold my collar. Now, if I decided that I wanted this as a permanent addition to, oh, let's say a t-shirt or a dress or a shirt, I could just simply sew this on. Just sew it right where I need it to be. Next, I'm going to discuss how I finished this trim. So basically, I did my single row, my first row, in the single crochet. And that's what you'll do once you get all your motif number ones connected and in the length that you desire it to be. Just as I showed you with the collar, you're going to single crochet each of the stitches all the way across. Now for this trim, when I made my second row, I simply skipped a stitch. So I did a half double crochet plus a chain and I skipped a stitch in order to give it this kind of eyelet look. 
Now for this particular trim, I did not add a third row. I very well could have, but because it's trim, I don't know how necessary that would be because I would wind up sewing this somewhere. Now, if I was using it as maybe a home decor, I might add that third row, which would then be single crochet in each stitch straight across. And I would finish it off like that. So that's a variation of the design you can certainly do or explore on your own. Thirdly, we got the choker. Now, with the collar, we have the closure up front. With the choker, I place the closure part towards the back. And of course, once again, added a snap so I could close it. Now, if you needed to, you could certainly add a button or you could just sew on a couple of pieces of ribbon and tie it on if that's what you prefer to do. These are just your basic beads from your basic hobby store. I picked them because they sort of reminded me of blood drops a little bit. And I simply attached them with jump rings. You can also find spider pendants, typically at your hobby store, for very cheap as well. And again, I simply attached it to my choker with jump rings. Now, you can certainly use whatever beads and add whatever embellishments you would like to to your choker as well. But regrettably, now is the time for me to say goodbye. So until I see all you wonderful and creative fiber artists again, stay crafty, stay amazing, and above all, keep weaving your weird. Bye-bye now.